Hey everybody, sorry it's been a little while since I did one of these Auto Trader style videos. Uh, you may have seen the previous ones where we looked for the best 125 for 500 quid, best being a bit of a strong word. Uh, we did the same at 1500 and we also looked at the most expensive bikes. I am planning to do more of these over the winter, different things. Um, I don't want to do millions and millions at once, so I'm going to dot them between normal videos. But today's one is a little bit different because I'm not going to just be on Auto Trader. Today I'm going to look, as you probably guessed, for DRZs. Now, before we go on from here, I know I just said DRZ and I'm English and I should say DRZ. However, I don't say ZZ Top and I don't say JZ. So when it comes to brand names and it rolls off the tongue easier, I'll say DRZ. If you can't deal with that, I am sorry. I'd always wanted to get a DRZ. It was kind of like my dream bike. And between 2013 and 2015, I think it must have been, I was looking around online and, and DRZs were not that uncommon there was about 20 or 30 sellings at any particular to listings at any particular time uh, a lot of them were yellow a lot of them were the off-road ease um there was very few blue and white ones there was quite a few black ones and the prices ranged from like 12 13 1400 pounds for the dodgiest of dodgies about three and a half grand for the newer much more up and together models well we've got five here so let's see what they look like shall we this is another thing I'm going to have to mention, and this is for future reference. When people say, you don't have to right-click to open a new tab, you can just click the middle wheel. I use tracker ball mice. I don't have a middle, like, clicky thing. Can you see all this okay? Yeah, you can. Let's have a closer look. Okay, so it looks pretty clean. Yeah, looks okay. Thing is, DRZs, they do clean up nice. Um... The, this is actually pre, this is pretty good actually because you've got uh, the frame paint tends to wear here if you actually ride the bike an awful lot. Um, same with the other side. You also get some rust uh, just along this front edge, but otherwise the bike stays together really, really well. Like this is aluminium and, and parts of the subframe are aluminium, and this is you know it's all good steel, it's anodized, so it doesn't really corrode. I have a few bits of rust on Derek, and I need to get to them. It's only surface; it's not deep. It's just on some welds where you can never really get the paint thick enough. Um, but I need to go over it and get, get some touch up paint of some sort just to seal it in. That's the FMF power bomb header. I think it's probably got the FMF can on it as well. Um, this looks like a tidy, tidy bike. Hold on. Uh, 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 can you see this? I've just saved the image and I'm going in closer. Can you see this? This is the sort of thing you need to watch out for. This grey here, that is not the right grey. That doesn't look right to me at all. And you, you see this texturing? That's weird. What's even weirder is all of this. This very, very much looks to me like this bike had rust around the rear sets. Um, and on the frame... And they've done a very poor job of cleaning it up before respraying it. I might be wrong on that, but that looks exactly like what they've done there. Because that. That, that's not right. You also note they've oiled the, uh, the exhaust to make it look nice. And when you start that up, it's going to smoke loads. See, it's dry under here. There's no big dings into the uh, side casings that would lead you to believe that uh, it had been dropped. But even if it has been dropped, it doesn't matter. It's a DRZ. They're made for dropping. Have a look from the other side. Just having a look at it from the other side. That cover should be uh, grey, not black. This looks weird. Even the colour of this side of this engine looks weird. And again, can you see this graininess in here? I mean, if I'm wrong, obviously I'm only making assumptions. There's even, a, look, you can almost even see a, um, a, a drip line. And they've emptied out the coolant tank recently. Petcock is quite, yeah, see, because look at the Petcock. That's got some rust on it. That's a bit more telling. I don't know this for definite, and if the company who's selling this bike sees this and says, oh my god, you, you can't believe it, I don't know for definite that that's what's happened, but this bike looks to me like someone's had a good go at it with a couple of cans of spray paint to hide rust and stuff. Not a problem if you get rid of the rust first, but that graininess makes no sense to me, so um, 
the, 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 it's the tone of it. It just doesn't look right. I mean, fair play for trying, you know, make a bike look nicer, but don't cover up stuff. Again, I'm only going on assumptions. Anyway, let's... Uh, okay, so there's nothing there about slightly dodgy paintwork. Uh, it's got 21,000 miles on it, and it's a 2007. Um... And it's currently up for £2,990. That's not too bad, actually. But, if if this is all paint, I would definitely want to be looking at that engine a little bit closer to see if, you know, because it's not so easy to notice when the rings and stuff are going. And, and I know a lot of people are like, well, they might say to me, like, oh, DRZs are bulletproof bikes, they never go wrong. I have spent nearly as much money on my bike in the five years I've owned it fixing stuff as I did buying it. I totally forgot to mention the things you actually should look out for when you're buying a DRZ regarding the engine. There's a few common issues that are worth looking out for. When you start the bike, see if it kicks out some smoke from the exhaust. If it's doing that, it's burning a bit of oil. A little bit might not be such a problem, but it is giving you the idea that the rings might be on the way out. You might have a scored bore, possibly. Um, original OEM parts to replace the bore, new, and piston, is about £1,600. Uh, or you can spend about 350 on a 440 kit with piston bore and everything. So it's worth mentioning on that. And that's one of the things I had to do to my bike, and that's why it's a 440. Listen to the engine, see if there's any strange knocking. Now there is a thing about the DRZ, which is the engines are very mechanically noisy. They make lots of clicking noises, lots of banging noises. It's all a bit noisy. And to people who are used to an inline four, they're gonna say it sounds like it's running like a bag of bolts, but it's not. It's just what it's supposed to sound like. However, if there is a fast continuous tapping, it could be the cam chain. So you might wanna keep an eye on that. Reason being some years had an automatic cam chain adjuster, which didn't adjust properly or over adjusted. Um, so many people convert to a manual one uh, like I have and then you just have to adjust it as and when it's needed. Since fitting it, I think I've only actually adjusted mine once and probably by about half a turn. So not a big deal, but it's worth mentioning manual cam chain adjuster. Uh, well, equally with that, actually, you should keep in mind that some people might have put one on and not done it right. So you do need to listen to the engine. Ideally, if you know someone who knows DRZs, get them to come and have a listen because we can pick up on stuff fast. And last but not least is to check for oil weeping from the counter shaft bearing seal, that being the front sprocket, uh, the shaft that it's on. The, the main counter shaft nut has been known on DRZs to come undone. It just seems to undo them. Even with tab washers, it can bend the tab washer out and undo them. It's a problem that happens with them. So you have to make sure that you lock tight them in some cases, make sure you've got good tab washers, do them to a decent torque setting, which actually has been uprated since the book. Long story short, that can all lead to a lot of problems with the counter shaft bearing where you'll end up with leakage and you can also end up with bearings completely seizing. So uh, it's worth noting those things. But they are really good and I love them and I don't put anyone off getting one. The only thing about them is they're no good on the motorway. That's all you need to know. Okay, so this is the... Is this an E? 7,000 miles, there's no 8, so it's the same age as mine. Looks pretty clean. Yeah, nothing to... See, all these pictures are uh, sort of front and back. There isn't really, there's only this one side on and you can't get too close, but this looks actually pretty clean. Uh, do be aware that the all there's about three models, or is it four models of the DRZ 400, and um, they all have different things. Like the the SM has got the upside down forks, and it's got I think it's got slightly different cams, and it's got a few other different different pieces about it. So um, they're not all the same. Okay, so this is the last three on uh, Auto Trader. We've got one here for a 2007 with 8,000 miles on it. Uh, they're asking three three. That's okay because of the mileage and that front fender is not original i don't think or oh, is it no it doesn't look right there's no obvious rust up here which is good now see sort of the smoothness of all this under here like on that last one it's the same sort of color but you could see it was all gritty yeah, there's not really a lot to it they're not saying too much three three again that's actually not that bad um i've got another one in blue here it's 3.5, so this will be an 07 again. Oh, it's an 08.
It's got a different shifter on it, non-standard, so that could mean one of two things. Either they just wanted a different shifter, or they snapped the previous one, dropping it or crashing it. Um, I know you might go and just buy a, uh, you know, a, a different gear shifter, but the thing is, the one on there that's stock works perfectly fine, and this person hasn't even changed anything about this bike other than taking the toolkit off. They've even left the original sticker on it. <laughs> So changing that makes me think, yeah, that's probably been replaced for a reason. Plastics are in good nick, compared to mine anyway. Yeah, you can see there's a little bit of rust going on here in the background. Um, and there's rust going on around here, and there's rust underneath this bit of paint, and there's some rust around here again. There is some weird corrosion going on there. As you can see, there isn't... A huge amount to pick from um, that mm, yeah if I was to pick one of these I'd either try and knock these people down oh actually that one's more expensive that's but that's an E it's an E from 2011 with only 2,400 miles on it so yeah that perfectly makes sense for it to be like. out of these five the best deal I can see here I think is that one for, for what looks genuine for miles, for a reasonable price, and also for the condition of it, and it doesn't appear to have some slightly questionable stuff going on with it. So, as for Auto Trader, there is the DRZ. So now I'm just going to go to eBay, Gumtree, Gumtree. Oh, by the way, I said I was going to try and find the worst listings uh, and do a video of like the worst, like most lying listings I possibly could. I tried to do this, and I found almost nothing but genuine posts uh, and people being honest about projects and stuff so it didn't really work out but then again I was looking on Auto Trader, and I don't think that's where people advertise anymore I think people advertise through places like um, through Facebook and Gumtree and stuff like that Facebook is difficult to look at the groups unless you're signed into an account yada 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 so that's a difficult one for me to look at I think it would be kind of cool actually if I had like a like a subreddit or something like I was mentioning and people could like suggest things for videos and we could like when we're doing one of these style videos people could like search around and find really funny listings and then we can look through those you know like every other YouTuber in the world is doing go from high to low thirteen thousand miles two thousand and five condition is used Oh, it's, it's used, all right. Um, rental grips, JT sprockets, much. I know you've listed all the mods, but like, completely standard, completely standard, pretty standard. The RZ Polish Chrome chain, got, no. Oh, he's not got one of the laser cut ones on, is he? Um, when you are listing the fact that your bike has an Iridium plug, you are really, really stretching. No offence. Hang on, this is not... What? This is an SM. Why has it got the wrong suspension on it? Right, so we got the Chrome DRZ chain guard. Ugh. No, it, it, by the way, if the person who owns this bike looks at this, no offence, dude, you know, each the own and all that. We both ride DRZs. We obviously like the same sort of bikes. Um, but I don't like that. Front disc looks tiny. Hold on, hold on. It's late night editing me. I obviously couldn't see the woods for the trees. This is clearly not an SM. Uh, it's got the adjusters on the rear swing arm, and it's also got the suspension in the front brake disc with a front setup of an E. Putting road tires on an E does not make it an SM. Just saying. They've done all of this, and yet they haven't changed the tail tidy. In fact, this has no indicators. Also, is that a super courser on the front? And, uh, something else on the rear yeah what i was pointing out earlier on i thought it was going to be shown in a better picture see these holes here these are for extra airflow into your airbox um it's not necessarily the best way to do it because you can do the three by three mod that's done under the seat and it means you don't get so much ingress through the side of the bike but uh, i wonder if they rejected it or did anything to the carb or anything like that i don't know if it's got a different carb in it has it got a different carb in it no it's got the stock carb in it I suppose they've given it a bit more air, they might have rejetted it, and they put an F and F on it to give it a bit of extra oomph. Okay, fair enough. So, no, I'm not I'm not trying to hate here. DRZ400 Supermoto, £2,000, if it's gone by the weekend. 
When was this posted? Seven days ago. We get one picture from the back. It's quite clearly got... I don't know what bodywork on it. DRZ400 SM2006 MOT till Feb. Awesome bike. Sounds mint. It had the restrictor taken out of the header pipe. Bigger Makuni carb and airbox modification. Goes really well and has a smaller sprocket on the front for quicker acceleration. Wheelies. And speedo stopped working. Think it's just a cable. So they're saying it's got 12,345 miles, but that's what it had when the speedo cable snapped. Not, um, not what it's got now. So it's old. It's got a lot of unquestionable miles on it. It looks a little ropey and it's two grand. That's, that's strong money, maybe. Okay, I've just jumped onto eBay quickly. Okay, so this one. All looking fairly stock and standard. Exhaust is very rusty. But otherwise, it's, it is what it is. Okay, um, did I read that correctly? It's a 2008, the same as Derek. It's done 17,000 miles, which is the highest mileage we've seen so far. Uh, and they're asking £3,895 for it. Now, is this a reflection of the prices increasing or a reflection of their belief it's worth more than it is at this point in time? Or they're pricing it to knock a bit off, knowing that everyone's gonna, everyone when you buy a bike goes to knock a bit off. So you, you know, add a bit on just to knock it off. That's, that's, that is what I call strong money. A K6 with 25,000 miles was set for 3,750. Huh? <laughs> hey, mate. How you doing there? Okay, that's in fairly standard condition for the age. It looks like it's been splattered with black paint at some point. Um, this is the standard bike. It's been unmessed with, which are hard to find. Yeah, partially true. The clock went faulty at 24K and was replaced with a second-hand one clock reading 14. So it's old. It's got quite a lot of miles on it. And they're not even confirmed miles. It is in good nick and it's very standard, but again, is this a reflection of the price prices going up or is this a reflection of people's expectations being too high? So there you go. If you want a DRZ, um, most of them these days, you're gonna end up with like an 06, an 07 or an 08. Uh, mine's, I think mine's an, was mine an 07 registered 08? I can't remember exactly. Um, mileage on DRZs, if they have under 10,000, it's pretty low. If they have under 20,000, it's pretty sort of, uh, you know, middle-aged. I can't say I've seen any DRZs with more than 30,000 miles on the clock. I mean, I think Derek's probably the highest mileage DRZ I've ever personally seen or seen listings for. I know people have put 50,000 miles on them before, no problem. However, mine, the engine is only got like a few thousand miles on it because it's a new piston, new bore. A lot of the stuff on it's actually quite new. That's why Derek's selling such good nick. And money-wise, I wouldn't spend less than about two and a half. Three is a good level. Three and a half to get something a little bit cleaner. If you're going north of that, the thing wants to be really good, I think. So there you go. There is my input on uh, DRZs if you were in the market for buying one. They are getting rarer and rarer. I've been, I had a look on um, howmanyleft.com or whatever it's called, where it shows you registered DRZs. And there's lots of them sawn. There's loads of Sawn DRZs and there's lots of them getting written off every year. So over the next few years, they are going to become more and more sought after, I think, because you can't get a carbed single cylinder um, anymore. They always have to be fuel injected. Anyway, I'm going to end it there because this has probably gone on too long. Huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you want to help support this channel, help, help me to continue making these videos, please do. I've also got a, a sale on stickers at the moment, 30% off. Go and have a look, links, links in the description. And uh, leave a like, subscribe to see more stuff like this, and leave a comment if there's a certain sort of video subject like this that you'd like me to look into. Catch you next time. Bye. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.